Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Lamplight City. We are in Ned's apartment, Ned Bunkeridge, or house. He's he's doing some boxing training. So we've looked around a little bit at the end of the last episode, and now we're going to speak to him and see if we can figure out what his link is to Tom Puffin and how he could potentially be linked to Ronan and his death. Excuse me, Mr. Bunkeridge? Oh, hello. Who are you? I'm Miles Fordham, a private investigator. Your ballot let me in. Right, <clears throat> of course. What can I do for you? I have a few questions for you, if you'd be so kind. Yes, all right. I could use a bit of a rest anyway. So this was the guy that we theorized could be the strange person hanging around um, that we heard about with the, the sort of built body and things. Um, red hair, potentially yes. But I think, didn't they also say that that person had a scar, which it doesn't look like this guy Ned has. So maybe this guy isn't our um, mystery person. So let's ask about Ronan. Are you familiar with a man named Ronan Lespay? Never heard of him. I have his portrait. Maybe you recognize him? No, I've never seen this man before, but huh, how about that? How about what? The detail in this ferrotype is a bit fuzzy, but his facial features and hair, they vaguely resemble mine. You know, now that he mentions huh. it, it's true. The spade does bear a passing resemblance to this fellow. Not quite as handsome, though. That is interesting. Could this guy have actually been the target of the murder, then? And and they just got the wrong person? Let's ask so about murder. So, you know nothing about the murder outside the Silent Raven four nights ago? That's right. I don't even know what the Silent Raven is. It's a bar in the Chum. Well, that explains it. For one thing, I don't go to that part of town. A man like me sets foot in that den of ruffians, and I'll have every Tom, Dick, and Harry challenging me to a fight. Not that I couldn't take them, but I have better ways to train my body than beating thugs. <laughs> right. Anyway, I don't drink. Dulls the mind and softens the body. I see. Well, just thought I'd ask. I'm sorry I can't help you, Mr. Fordham, but I hope you solve whatever it is you're investigating. You seem like a nice enough sort. This guy seems quite nice as well, actually. Let's ask about Tom Puffin. Tell me about your uncle. You know Tom? I've met him, yes. He's the one who told me where you lived. Oh, right. Well, my uncle is uh, an interesting man. Is that an interesting of the good or bad variety? I really wish he would take better care of himself is all. I have the feeling that he's on some sort of drug, although he always denies it. Oh, he is. What gives you that impression? Well, most of the time he acts completely normal. He goes to work, visits with me. Sometimes we go out together to the theater or a gallery. But some days his mood changes. He goes very solitary, won't leave his house, gets short with me. One time I went to visit him, I heard him yelling along with what sounded like furniture being knocked about. Huh. It only happened once, but it worried me. I hope Tom isn't in any sort of trouble. Opium is one hell of a drug. It's a good thing you never got to that point with the soporific, or Adelaide would have thrown you out much sooner. Ha <laughs> <coughs> Are you all right, Mr. Fordham? Yeah, yes, yes, I'm fine. What, too soon? <laughs> yep, Tom's address. Did you give me Tom's address? You don't have it? I thought you said you'd spoken with him. I visited him at the cathedral. But if he's there, why do you want his address? Uh, I think he might be involved in a murder. I just wanted to look at his things. Actually, that that sounds weird. <coughs> uh, I think he might be involved in a murder. I think we're going to have to go with the murder because that just sounds odd. Like, I, I, Tell me where he lives so I can look through his things. Just so it makes you sound like a thief or a weirdo. So I, I feel like this guy would maybe appreciate honesty. I have reason to believe he may Fingers be somehow crossed. involved in a murder. That's a serious accusation, Mr. Fordham. What proof do you have? Uh, Nothing concrete just yet, which is why I'd like to investigate his home. Well, you're not the police, so I'm not obligated to tell you. Fine. I'm sorry, but you'll need more than just a suspicion to convince me. Okay, so... I, I don't want to click that yet. On second thought, never mind. So we can press... Okay, maybe we need something first to come and show him why we suspect. So Priscilla. Does the name Priscilla mean anything to you? Yes. Yes, it most certainly does. Ah. My lady love is named Priscilla Poundstone. 
I see. Huh. What can you tell me about her? Oh, she's a darling. I love her very much. Such a kind and gentle soul she is, too. Loves animals, especially dogs. Huh. We've been together for ages and are due to be married soon. When was the last time you saw her? Saw her? Oh, no, Mr. Fordham. She doesn't live in New Britannia. She attends Miss Threadneedle's Academy for Young Ladies in Cormorant. She lives in New Holland? That's right. I've never actually met Priscilla face to face. We communicate <coughs> exclusively through correspondence. Ha, huh, okay. How did you two get involved? Her father and mine were old military friends. They decided between them that their children would be engaged. And you're both in agreement? Yes. I admit at first I was a bit hesitant, but we share many of the same interests. The distance between us is not a detriment to our love. I wonder how that will change once they actually begin cohabiting. <laughs> uh, I'm assuming that he's actually seen a picture or something of of this Priscilla and he, he knows that she's actually a real person and not somebody impersonating her. So you correspond regularly with Priscilla? That's right. At least one letter a week. My uncle does me the kindness of acting as courier. Okay, that's sus. Think I might have a look at one of those letters? What for? They're private correspondence. I understand, but I feel this is important. Perhaps you could show me one that isn't too personal. Hmm. Yes, I suppose that would be all right. In fact, I think there's a recent one on the shelf there. That's not too private. Uh, but you okay. won't need to take it, will you? <clears throat> no, not no. at all. I just want to have a look. Uh, right. Let's end the conversation then. Not a problem. <clears throat> let's, so he said on the shelf, did he? So I'm guessing it's this one. <laughs> My dearest Ned, I was so happy to receive your last letter. Things are going well here. I am due to begin my next course within the week. How are things with you? Did you manage to set up that gymnasium you were talking about? You'll have to send me a ferrotype of your new physique, P. Wait just a minute. Something's off here. The handwriting in this letter is different to the one we found before. There's something strange going on with this Priscilla. Ah. Okay, let's take a look then. Thanks for pointing that out, Bill. <laughs> I didn't notice that. Uh, right, so... Letter from Priscilla. Oh, so it's this. Ah, oh, it's a shame we can't actually see it. So the one to... Oh, so the what? this is the one we found in the cathedral, wasn't it? In the chest, I think. The letter to Ned. So the one in the chest was different to the one on the shelf. Huh. Could I ask you a few more questions, okay. Mr. Okay. All right, but try not to take too long. Don't want to drop my heart rate too much. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. You, you wouldn't want to do that. Uh, okay, let's ask about himself. You're very into physical conditioning, aren't you? Oh, you noticed. Yes, I believe that a healthy body is just as important as a healthy mind, if not more so. Well, he's definitely prioritizing the form. <laughs> it's important to keep fit, especially at a job like mine where I'm in a chair most of the day. What job is that? I'm a clerk at the Bank of Vespuccia. Huh. But someday, I hope to leave and teach others about the health benefits of regular exercise. Perhaps even open up my own gymnasium. Ha! Ah, he actually thinks people are gonna go for that. Good luck to him. Well, Bill, funny. Um, so, I wonder if we met him before, because we went to the bank on a previous case, didn't we? He doesn't look familiar, but I guess I wasn't paying attention. About your uncle's address? Let's see if we can ask any more about what this. about it? Why do you want it? Aha! I suspect there might be something going on between him and Priscilla. I think there's something going on between him and Priscilla. Something going on? What do you mean? I found a letter addressed to you from her at the cathedral, and the handwriting is different to the letter you have here. He has one of her letters? Why would he? I'm not sure, which is why I'd like to search his home and find out more. If he's going behind my back, I swear I'll... Calm yourself, Mr. Bunkridge. If I find anything, you'll be the first to know. All right. Tom lives at 117 Gimlet Terrace in Worcester. Nice. Hey, we're practically neighbors. <laughs> Here, I've got a spare key. If you find anything about him and Priscilla, you'll tell me, won't you? Of course. Thank you, Mr. Bunkridge. <sighs> okay, well. Thanks for your time. <clears throat> Not a problem. So, he's not our guy because he doesn't have the scar, so I was wrong about that. Priscilla is suspicious, so is the uncle. 
So, what do we have here? Return to Mrs. Morgan and accuse Jimbo. I, I don't really want to accuse Jimbo just yet. Uh, so, <clears throat> I mean, Jimbo is very suspicious, in my opinion. We've got Ned's residence. So, Tom... Oh, Tom is over here. Puffin's residence. Let's go to Upton, just for a second. Uh, no, I didn't want to come here. Click the wrong one. Let's go to the police station. <clears throat> Because Upton is always good at helping us out, Upton. right? Certainly. What's on your mind? And I wonder if she knows anything about this suspicious character. Wow, we've got a lot actually going on here. Let's ask about Ronan. You wouldn't happen to know anything <coughs> about Ronan Lespay, would you? Probably nothing more than you already know. His body is in the mortuary, and the reason for his murder is unknown. I suggest you speak with Dr. Edwards. We did. Uh, review case herself. I feel like we should actually speak to Upton a bit more than we do. She always has some good info which could potentially help us out uh, herself. How are things with you? <laughs> Better than last week, but plenty of feathers still ruffled around here. Okay. What happened? You have to ask. Snelling was not happy with you turning up at the Latham crime scene. Oh. <laughs> he was a right inquisition around here. Snelling going around to interrogate everyone, trying to ferret out a leak. So he suspects. I'm afraid so. I managed to calm him down some and divert suspicion. He thinks someone on the force is speaking to the Gazette, not to you directly. Ah. Well, that's some kind of relief. I'm sorry you had to go through that. Oh, don't worry about me. Well, maybe worry about me a little, hmm? Uh, I, I get a weird vibe between these two. I hope nothing is gonna sort of go in the romantic direction here. Uh. Stra we can ask about the strange man and the election. Let's go election first. That was one hell of an election, wasn't it? That it was. I don't know how he managed it, but I'm glad Leroy won. I can't say I agree, but I'm not really surprised. Leroy may have started as something of a dark horse, but his campaign had been gaining a lot of steam leading up to the election. Uh, pun not intended. <laughs> yes, well, it's the Steam Tech issue that clinched it. When something like the Lygia happens, people start to wake up and wonder if we really want contraptions like that in our lives. You have to admit, he was playing up on people's fears. Not exactly the most honorable way of getting into office. Fordham, since when have politics ever been honorable? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Discussion for another day. Strange man. Upton, I need you to put out a bulletin. There's someone I need found. Ah! Who's that? We can put out a bulletin. I don't know his name. I only have a description. All right, I'll need to ask you a few questions. Fine. Could you describe the man's height and build? Oh, God. Um... Ah, oh, no. I think... Was he tall and large? Oh, God, I can't remember. <laughs> oh, no. Um, right, let's think. I'm sure... Oh, am I sure he was tall and large, though? Oh, uh, God. He was definitely... He was definitely well built, wasn't he? I can't remember what everyone said about him. Oh, God. Um... Oh, no. I, I think he was tall and large. I think. He's tall, with a large build. All right. What color is red. his hair? We know he definitely had red hair. I'm certain it's red. Hmm. All right. Do you know of any unique details that might make him easier to identify? Yes, the scar. Okay, this, the, okay. Distinct scar and, and also the beard. But let's go for the scar because the scar is going to be more distinctive than the beard, right? Yes, he has a scar on his left cheek in the shape of a shepherd's crook. Good. That will be helpful. All right, I'll put out the bulletin. Oh, I just hope... A moment. I really hope we got the build right. All right, the bulletin is out. I'll let you know if... Upton, just got your bulletin. Hello, Giles. Have you got something for me? As a matter of fact, I've got someone in the jail fitting your description perfectly. You don't say. Yep. Okay. Name's Harvey Presser. Got picked up a couple of days ago. Thank you, Giles. You heard the man, Fordham. You've got yourself someone to interrogate over at Bow Street. Right. Okay, does that mean we got it right? <laughs> God, I, I, I'm I, sure they said, the people we spoke, I'm sure they said he was large and tall, but I, I can't remember. Interrogate Harvey Presser at the Bow Street Jail. It's, it's a lead, nonetheless, right? Even if we are wrong. Um, 
<coughs> where is the jail? There. We've been to the jail before, definitely. Look, it's our old friend. Bottom. You look even worse than the last time I saw you. We can't all manage to keep looking as good as you, Giles. <laughs> what brings you back? Another person to talk to you. <coughs> I'm looking to speak with your prisoner. Presser? I just got off the horn with Upton about him. Seems you're not the only one interested in finding the man. Then I suppose it's lucky I got here first. Suppose so. What was he brought in for, exactly? He's the suspected leader of a cooping gang. Makes me glad I didn't bother to vote. All those dirty politics are just a waste of time. And people wonder why nothing in Parliament ever changes. <laughs> Alright, well. <clears throat> oh, we can't actually speak to him. Alright, we'll speak to this guy, Harvey Presser. Harvey Presser, I presume. Who's asking? Miles me. Fordham. I'm a private investigator. What do you want from me? Just a few minutes of your time. You don't have anywhere to be, do you? <laughs> uh, Ask what you want, but I'm not answering anything until I see a lawyer. Sure, sure. Let's ask about Ronan. No, let's ask about himself. Oh, this is definitely our guy. Look at that. Look at that scar. <clears throat> I hear you were arrested for leading a cooping gang. Is that right? I don't have to tell you a thing. You're not a copper. This is the cooping thing is the thing that Daredevil was talking about. So maybe Daredevil, you may well be right on your theory about what happened to Ronan. Do you recognize the man in this ferrotype? Should I? His name is Ronan Lespay. He was shot outside the Silent Raven on election night. That's a real shame. Murder. Are you saying you know nothing about the murder outside the Silent Raven on election night? Not a thing. I've never even heard of the Silent Raven. Is that right? Because mm -hmm. I've spoken to at least three people who swore they saw you there that night. Yeah, and you're not police, so that doesn't scare me. You can't do a thing about it. <clears throat> this guy's Fine. starting to get on my nerves. There has to be a way to make him talk. There's gotta be. That's all the questions I have for now. Good. Leave me in peace. We're going to need something more to get him to talk then. So, I'll tell you what, guys. We're out of time anyway. So, we'll try and find something that will get him speaking in the next episode. But it's all warming up very nicely, isn't it? So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, Barry Aldridge, and Hobo for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time.